there everyone and welcome back to Mount N Blade Warband. We're uh, back here after a very long time of not doing anything really with Mountain Blade. I tried a little bit to do the new one. Didn't go that well I thought so I skipped that. Uh, but so many people have been asking me to take a look at Between Empires so that's what we're doing right now. So. Really what's interesting about this mod is the fact that it kind of it kind of actually facilitates the way I played the Legil mod, which is kind of the big thing I did for Mountain Blade. Uh, it kind of facilitates the way when I've played it with of how I set it up with different companies and stuff like that, but it makes it even more advanced. And yeah, we're gonna get into it. So let's go ahead and start a new game, shall we? And with that, I should also say, I did put it up to a vote what faction I should play as. Most people, when I asked what nation, I think I got like at least like something like 40, 45% said Great Britain and 45% said uh, Prussia. They said Prussia Mostly because uh, apparently they're a bit OP in the start because they start up with a higher fire rate because they've got uh, breech loading rifles. Uh, and they also have uh, are the only faction as far as I know or as far as people told me that has quests. So you actually, actually have kind of a storyline built into that faction. And on the Great Britain side, well, everyone always <laughs> wants Great Britain, so that's why that. Also, someone mentioned um, I could actually go ahead and bring back from my uh, British Leagil, I could bring back uh, Charles Edrington. Uh, I think I would, if I would do that, no, I would probably bring him back for the separate British faction, which is the colonial faction, like he's been sent overseas down to India and now he's um, doing war in the colonies stuff like that that could be interesting but um, what actually ended up happening was um, like there was two I think it was one or two people that I said France but then when we actually put it up into a poll uh, for people to vote then France started off a mile ahead of everyone else and no one really catched up to it and it won pretty hands down with more than a third of the votes um, so yeah we're gonna play as France which is what I started with if we go back to Le Gilles uh, so maybe that's fitting um, maybe a lot of people uh, haven't followed me that long I gained a lot of new subscribers with the World War One mod uh, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I think you old guys will uh, figure it out as we go along here. Welcome to the Between Empires mod. Um, game speed, we're gonna go with normal. I believe there's some technology stuff you can actually research. And obviously, we can start on this adventure, but mm, I don't see that really so I think we will I think the way to play this is as a faction leader I'm not entirely sure um, it's interesting to play as just an adventurer uh, can find it kind of tedious to go through the process of joining the faction and all that so let's just start as the faction leader we'll start with all the options ready so these are the nations that you could have picked from um, I probably should have done a list and shown you guys which one you could play as. Um, but I couldn't find one that I could easily uh, copy and paste. So I just didn't bother writing them all down. Um, so we're going to play as France. French Empire. Let's go ahead and start the game. And there we're off. So, I find myself in Paris, in uh, the headquarters. We're gonna go ahead and uh, do some shenanigans. And uh, yeah, we'll see what, what happens, really. So, Secretary of State. I wanna do a few things. Um, 
You may wish to... Yeah, this is one of the things that... There's a lot of places which um, doesn't have a lord. And I thought I could give them to myself. Um, like, if I want to assign this one that he said, there's a number of one. But, of course, I can't actually find myself here. Um, so I would like to grant a load of these places just to myself. Because right now you only start with the capital if you start as a faction leader. And, I mean, you don't make that much money from just the capital usually. Um, so what we want to do, so we have a number of things. We can want to leverage our government ties to improve, we can improve relationship, we can send the invitation to an alliance. Uh, we can fabricate, fabricate uh, reasons for a conflict with a foreign power, um, and so on. We can declare war, we can replace ourselves, and so on. What I think we're going to do is we're going to try to improve the relationship with the British Empire. That's going to cost me uh, £4,200. Go ahead. So we're going to try and... Just because I, I don't want to fight the British... Um, to keep keep them out of the picture, so we're gonna see about that. Uh, someone that I think we can fight, though, is little puny Belgium. So we're gonna start off with a, a easy task there. So I want our government to fabricate reasons for us to declare war on Belgium, so we can actually. Get a war going here in the start. So, Kingdom of Belgium, yes. Go ahead and fabricate. Oh, that was cheap. Compared to for being friends with... Um, and this is f that now. We don't need anything more there. We're going to head outside because, as I said, I don't really make enough money from just being, um, being in command of... Um, of uh, the country, apparently. I only control Paris. I wish I could just give me all the small villages um, easier to recruit and stuff like that. So we're gonna head over now and we're gonna start a business. I think for Paris, if I remember correctly, it's... Um, we'll see which one is actually the best one to set up. I think it's iron. Nope! Um... It might be something else. You know what? That's not that fun to watch, is it? I can do that later. What we want to do now is we definitely need to start some research. We're going to go over to reports. And somewhere here, I believe. Is it here? Feather report. Ah, view your faction's military technologies. So we need to research a number of stuff. Um, and I believe the Prussians already start with the breach loader, or there was enough people saying that they start with that. I would have gone down this line anyways. I'm not too fussed about the percussive explosive shell to start off with. I would rather uh, see a lot of my f uh, soldiers staying alive. 10% chance survive being wounded. That's pretty good. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and research that. So we start off with re we started off research. We are trying to become friends with the British, and we're trying to declare war on Belgium. It should be easy enough for big old France to take out Belgium. Um, my other idea was actually to start a war down towards here, but I wonder if the AI might have trouble actually crossing the sea in a good way. Um, so, maybe later on, when we get more of a hang of it, we might be able to do that. But for now, this is how we're going to do it. Um, what I want to do is... Let's see. Go back. Oh, I, was, I wasn't there. I was in Paris, of course. Let's go to the marketplace. Gun shop. So, I have still £8,000. Um, I wonder. It would be look kind of fashionable to have some kind of oriental sword, like a Turkish saber or something like that, rather than having the saber. 
Then I wonder also the revolver. Like having a... This one is pretty good though, the Smith & Wesson Model 3. It's 50 damage, 94 accuracy and I got a high speed rating uh, compared to a lot of these others. Maybe what I would buy then is just a extra pistol ammo. Maybe a double barreled shotgun. General riding around with a double barreled shooting down everyone. Uh, uniforms, you actually have to go somewhere else, similar to what it is in Liagil, you have to go to a... Um, I think Riem is one of those. That's not a city, that is a... Uh, what's it called? Um, let's see, your relation with no faction has deteriorated from 90 to 0. Okay, no faction is no longer very happy with us. Uh, British, co wait, British colonies, a, ca a Casius belly against uh, Persia and the Austrian Empire against the Ottomans. So we can kind of see the other factions. Uh, Spanish Empire, your relationship with the Spanish Empire has increased from zero to two. Okay, I wonder why, no idea why. Um, let's go to the armory. So, we definitely need guns. I don't know if I prefer straight barreled guns or the howitzer. Well, I think it's easier to get a howitzer because it'll fire over hills and stuff. So I don't have to worry about where I place it as much. So we'll hire one um, howitzer. Then I'm gonna actually switch out uniform. The French Napoleon torso, I don't like it. We're gonna go with the general one instead. And I wonder, I maybe want to have the cavalry boots instead. I think that looks a bit more fancier and also the hat. Not too much of a fan of that. We're not gonna have the dragoon helmet though, we're gonna just have this one. So I think that looks a lot better in terms of what my character looks like. I will have to pay 800 pounds for that. And now really all we have to do, just uh, before maybe we'll want to take a look at how big the map. So the bit, the map goes all the way from up here in sort of Scotland. And then as you saw, we've got North Africa, uh, Algeria, Tunis, and it goes down through Libya. And then we hit Egypt. And then we can go further down, and we end up in uh, on the Arabian Peninsula, and we've got like Iraq over here with Baghdad, and we can go even further, uh, where we end up in what's this? This is uh, Iran or Persia, as it's called in this mod, or at this time, and then we got British colonies all the way down here, where we actually get a few um, towards the sort of the the Indian colony uh, that the British had. And then we get <laughs> Afghanistan over here. Uh, what do we have here? Some Emirate. God knows where we are now. Kind of lost myself. And then we've got Russia, of course. And Russia goes far north as well. So the map is really huge, and then we're back in Europe, we got the Germans, the frightful Germans, everyone telling me to worry about. Which, since I, well, since I am French, and it's 1860, yes, I probably should be quite worried about the Germans. Um, with all of this said, we're going to prepare against the war with Belgium. And hopefully no one else tries to uh, cause a a um, something that causing a cause belly to um, declare war on us. Hopefully, um, seems like the Spanish are friendly with us, so we've got them. Kind of hopefully them they won't declare war, and then all the other nations that are bordering us are kind of small. So hopefully the uh, improved relationship with London will work and then we kind of really only have to worry about the big uh, German state, the Prussians, 
Otherwise, we're kind of just next to the smaller ones. So we've got Sardinia, Switzerland, um, Württemberg, and Belgium. And then, of course, Spain. But hopefully Spain stays out of it. So, in the meantime, I'll be prepping up my troops. I'll be uh, setting up some businesses so I can make money. And, oh yeah, one thing that I should say, and I should probably have said earlier, I have not played this a lot. So, if you've got any helps or tips for anyone that actually played that a lot, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. But, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, work our way towards the war with Brussels. Pretty fitting music. Uh, we have an abolitionist incident. News reaches you from the Kingdom of Bavaria's capital in the evening hours that one of its most prolific traders and in more colonial regions, more so known as one of the richest slave traders in the world, have been captured and subsequently executed by staunch abolition abolitionists who have sworn loyalty to the King Kingdom of Prussia. The Kingdom of Prussia has refused to hand over the perpetrators, probably more so due to the fact that the traders have been a thorn in the side of their traders for many years. Local militia companies have been promising revenge should the abolitionists not be surrendered. And the situation is quickly, quickly escalating. Only aimed de-escalation can avert the conflict now. So... A big-time slave trader from Bavaria was killed uh, somewhere by um, subjects loyal to the Kingdom of Prussia. So at least uh, Prussia and Bavaria is going to fight each other. And that means that they cannot possibly go ahead and declare war on me, which means that I well, can, can take my sweet time and punch around the Belgians. Great. As we are preparing for war with Belgium, I have started to train the peasants of the village of Versailles, or the villages around Versailles, I should say. I hope there's no peasants living in Versailles. Um, and I've been training them to... Um, stand up against bandits that roam around Versailles. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. It's clear that I'm needed to steer France in the right directions if there's loads of bandits uh, gallivanting around Versailles. Uh, anyways, a bandit uh, group, now that I've trained all the peasants, um, the bandit group have been spotted um, coming towards the village. We need to prepare to defend it and this might very well be a good time to actually um, show how some of the battle mechanics before we get into any battle with the Belgians, because um, it would be um, unfortunate if I'd be <laughs> humiliated if the French army would be humiliated on the battlefield against the Belgians. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, fight against these uh, bastards. So, first of all, I think we want to stop everyone, but I think the way you're supposed to actually control the guys is move up into this column, and if I move this correctly, we should actually order the troops around like this, and then let's go back down. Shit, we have loads of our soldiers are dying now against these forest bandits. Um, I'm not entirely sure how to split. Oh, you know what? There we go. We can... We have the... Why don't we uh, send the peasants to actually charge? And then... Let's form a single row, gentlemen. Right now we're getting hammered by the... Uh, forest bandits. I told them, I think I told them to form a single row. Well, that's fine. Oh, now we actually shot one. I'm gonna... Why are these guys following with... Okay, that didn't go too great. 
I'm just gonna follow with these to see if we're gonna get some of these uh, forest bandits. I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. Let's see. Can someone get that guy before he kills all my soldiers? I'll I think we'll order the regiment forward. Let's see. Yes, I've got them selected. Let's have them march over here. I think yes, there's supposed to be a way where you can get them to run into position. And I think the first company just lost all morale, so that's why they're leaving. Yeah, Company 1 was forced to retreat. Um, I haven't yet learned exactly how to read the stats. Let's stop the company right there. So I believe... Uh, the morale is this thing. Might be. So if that falls below a certain number, they'll retreat. It's kind of messy with... Um, who joins what company, because we've got one peasant still in the ranks of this one. I could definitely see how Prussia would run us over if I'm having trouble dealing with these um, forest bandits. I don't know how many uh, of these uh, French recruits we have lost in the fight against these uh, bandits. You know what? I'll order a charge. Maybe I should have told them to uh, specifically select uh, melee. That might have been the trick. Oh, I <laughs> rode him over. And I had a shot. We got it. Yeah, I think I should have uh, told them to uh, charge melee. Um, but we got kind of a, an idea of how this works. It's a shame my artillery wasn't able to join. Ah, oh, there we go. Now they're running. That's going to be very useful. First time I actually played this, I uh, sort of wasn't able to, or didn't figure out how the, um, how to, um, get the regiment to run into position. So they, <laughs> they just kind of walked around and got shot, uh, in my test run of this. Right, but that was actually pretty abysmal, if we look at the, uh, stats here. Like, uh, <laughs> all the villagers are more or less dead. I mean, how many? Re there's six dead recruits here. There are even more back there. Let's go ahead and take a look. So we, in total, we lost 14 French recruits. Ten of them were killed for routed. Doesn't look like a great start for France here, I must say. Um, however, the bandits were broken, um, and hopefully Versailles will. Um, We'll uh, be, uh, we'll definitely be able to get a lot of recruits out of this. Uh, so I've been able to get up uh, quite a few recruits um, from this village, and quite a few of them were able to be upgraded. So we can upgrade all of them to get French infantry. That's pretty good. Um, but, yeah, there's a long wait. Oh, let's see what happened here. Border skirmish can lead to full conflict. Soldiers from the Russian Empire were killed in a border skirmish with the Kingdom of Prussia, either through malice or incompetence. And attempts to peacefully resolve the situation can fail. They can fail? Yes, they can. Uh, mounting political and social forces have chance to bring war to the two nations... And now there's nothing to do but wait and see. 
How much more blood must be spilled before Russian Empire feels they've gotten their revenge? Okay, so there might be... I, maybe I should show. So, if we go through... Uh, faction relationship report. So right now, our relationship with the Ottoman Empire has increased to 3. British Empire has increased to 6, but the same as the uh, Spanish. I don't know why the Ottomans like us. Uh, British Colonials has increased to 3. So, our uh, it seems to be working. The two sort of bigger empires close to us, the Spanish and the British, um, are currently um, sort of increasing the relationship with us. Prussia is uh, embroiled, possibly at war with the... Um, or going to war against the Bavarians and possibly against the Russians. So that means that I have even more sort of freedom to uh, go ahead and take my time to deal with the Belgians. Um, but we're gonna need more troops, aren't we? We're gonna need a lot more troops, probably. Uh, given how many I lost against the forest banditry, I, uh, against a professional enemy army, I guess we're going to need uh, quite a lot of uh, troops being replenished. And hopefully that um, our uh, military technology will come through, so it'll save some of those guys. Uh, I should also be trying to look for companions in the towns, but given how many towns and stuff there are, in the world, it might be hard to find the companions. But I'll try. We definitely need a character to be set up as a doctor. Um, and then others possibly as uh, company commanders. Like I did in Legil. Right, we have another faith super famous uh, slave trader. This time around though, um, the abolitionists are French. And so Switzerland has uh, basically a claim to go to war against us. Uh, I guess we'll try to de-escalate it because I'm trying to escalate with um, with Belgium. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna try to send someone to improve relationship uh, with the Swiss, trying to avoid warfare there. Um, apparently we didn't hand over the perpetrators. So um, but we also have another because I managed to. R I ran into a farmer back in Paris that said that the village of Nevers is being attacked by mountain bandits. So we get another opportunity. Also, um, uh, there's a lot of people going to war against the uh, Kingdom of Two Sicilies in Italy. Not entirely sure what that's all about. So we got 14 man, uh, mountain bandits. I've almost got a hundred soldiers in my army, so this should go, hopefully, pretty well. And I've got some extra troops with me this time around. So we're gonna get first company, and then second company is gonna be over here. Not entirely sure how the split actually will work out. What is? Oh, this is fa the farmers. I brought with me uh, light infantry. I think it's going to be different when we actually meet a proper army because I'll be able to field cannons and stuff like that. Maybe I should have brought cavalry. Cavalry should have worked. So right now it's going pretty okay, but that's because I've got like I've got so many troops on the field compared to the 14 mountain bandits. Damn, of all the people that get shot, I get shot. How is he managing to get through the line? Oh, I actually hit the bastard. I didn't do that much damage, though. Wait, how is he coming that close before you guys shoot him? Let's see if he can't do volleys. First company will fire on my command. First company. Fire. You didn't hit anyone. Serves you right. 
Right, first company will then advance. In good order. Who's that running ahead? So, is that an artillery officer? Yes, it is. Well, that's wonderful, isn't it? That he's putting himself in danger. The enemy is actually quite far away. Uh, first company will advance all the way up here. Second company, I do not care about you. You can stay back there. Damn it, I can't hit again. Maybe I should get off the horse. Though they really are gunning for me, aren't they? That bullet will probably aim for me. Right, let's stand by the banner. And we can look down the line as they're about to fire. First company. Fire! We got two of them. Not everyone fired though. A guy hiding behind the haystack. Let's see if you guys can't get him this time around. First company. Fire! We shot someone. I'm gonna investigate the hay bale. This time around it clearly worked out a lot better, but then again we had a lot more troops with us, didn't we? First company! Fire! We're not really hitting, are we? I'm gonna mount up, and I'm gonna ride out, and I'm gonna shoot them guy myself. Or no, let's maybe do a proper melee charge. I'll lead a proper melee charge. First company will use melee. First company will advance. First company will charge. We'll get this guy. But there's one more! Hiding all the way. You ruffian! I'll give you... Let's have them run to position, shall we? Let's go ahead and look like that. I'll give you one chance to surrender. First company! Oh yeah, we need to. First company needs to use ranged instead. What does this guy have? Sharps rifle. Will you surrender? No, you will not. Is that French? Clearly a dialect I've never heard of. Right, don't aim at your commanding officer. Good lads. He gives me no choice than to execute him. First company! Fire! They're very quick to stop firing once they actually kill him. Very good. This time around it went a lot better. So this time around we only had one guy killed and one wounded. And not a single one of us ran away. That's the important part. Um, <laughs> battle worthy of a song? Mm, I do not think so. Um, however, the populace is happy with me, and we managed to replenish that one guy who died. Um, 
Let's see, we'll need to go back to Paris and uh, arrange, try to arrange so that we don't go to war with the Swiss. It appears as much that we cannot in fact improve relationship with two nations at the same time, so we might be looking at a two-front war in case Switzerland actually declares war on us. By next time, I hope that we have actually been able to fabricate a claim against the Belgians and we are able to go to war with them. Um, if you have any tips and tricks or you saw that I missed out on a crucial bit of um, a gameplay mechanic, then go ahead and comment down below. And with that said, I say as I always say, hopefully you guys enjoy this. And hopefully, I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye.